And that's the whole story, Lieutenant. As ugly and disgraceful as it seems. Mrs. Mitchell, if a lot more people would face facts as courageously as you have, we'd have a lot less crime. This could solve one very important problem in our area. What's that? Fingerprints all over the apartment. No identification. They could belong to Mr. Mitchell. Then you think that he... Just a minute, Mrs. Mitchell. The presence of Craig's fingerprints in the apartment doesn't necessarily mean that he's guilty of the crime. No, but of course I'll question him. Do you know where Mr. Mitchell is now? He's probably home. Good. Well, let's see if he is at home now. Do you mind if I just wait here? I, I think I've faced as much as I can face for one day. No, not at all, Mrs. Mitchell. I understand you just stay here and make yourself at home. Thank you. Mr. Mitchell, you said you've known Yvonne Madison for some time. Yes, about six months, maybe a little longer. When did you see her last? Last night. Mind telling me about it? Not much to tell. I went to her apartment about 6.30. We were going to have a couple of drinks and then go out for dinner. You said we're going. Yes. Does that mean you didn't go out for dinner? That's right. We got into an argument. Then what happened? Well, I decided going to dinner with Yvonne in that mood would be most unpleasant, so I picked up my hat and left. What time was this? About 7.15. The medical examiner set the time of death at about 7.15. I had nothing to do with that. Mr. Mitchell, do you own a revolver? Yes. What do you keep in? Top drawer of that desk. You mind? Go right ahead. This one? Uh, that's right. Has this gun been fired recently? Never been fired that I know of. Mr. Mitchell, there are two discharged shells in this gun and the smell of powder in the muzzle I'd say had been fired in the last 48 hours. I don't see how that could be. But it is. And ballistics will be able to verify whether or not the bullets from this gun were the ones that killed Yvonne Madison in a very short time. In the meantime, you're under arrest. Suspicion of murder. <laughs> Mitchell, your husband is under arrest. Lieutenant Weston. Lieutenant, this is Herb Maris. Would you check the ownership of a club coupe about eight years old? License number KTY 463. I've got it, Herb. I'll have that information for you in a minute. You call me back on it, huh? In the meantime, I think I've got a little item that'll interest you. Now, oh, what's that? The bullets that killed Yvonne Madison were fired from the gun we found in Mitchell's house. So we've taken the word suspicion out of the charge. Now it's plain old first degree murder. Hello, Counselor? Counselor? Spook Chambers, alias Rusty Harper, alias Gordon McNeil, and alias Charles Kilmer. He's not on the wanted list right now, but he's got a record as long as you're armed. This five o'clock proposition was probably a stall. Herb, uh, let's get there a little early and see what happens. Just try the landlady. Mrs. Heaney? you again. Well, what now? Uh, Lieutenant Weston, police department. We're looking for Spook Chambers. Oh, he left here about five minutes ago. Did he say where he was going? Not a word. Yes, he did. Told me you were going to give him a job and some money. Are you? I haven't decided. Now what? I'll put out a call and have him picked up. Hey, wait a minute. You better watch out and see that my car doesn't get all shot up. Your car? Yes. He swindled me out of the keys again. But it's in the garage. I saw it on the way in. My car? It's still there.
like we're here about five minutes too late. I'll put in a call for the lab boys in the car now. <laughs> oh, dollars. Cigarette lighter, glasses, pen knife. You know, Herb, a lot of things here, but nothing that really tells a story. Except that Spook didn't have much to show for his years of crime. Mr. Heaney, there are a lot of keys here for a man in Spook's position. Do you know what they're for? Let's see. Uh, yeah, this is the key to his room. And, uh, uh, this is the key to the front door. And this... Well, you know as much about this as I do. It's a master key. It'll unlock anything. It'll fit. Uh, uh, this... No, I don't know. Mr. Maris, Lieutenant Weston, how did you get in? With a key. The key to the front door. Where did you get it? We found a dead man in a garage at Ninth Avenue this afternoon. He had this key in his possession. What a coincidence. No, not a coincidence. He was the same man I saw talking with you earlier today. He was an odd sort of man, but I... Mrs. Mitchell, we think you met Spook Chambers during your welfare work in that section of the city. And we think you propositioned him to kill Yvonne Madison and put the blame on your husband. Mr. Maris, do you know what you are saying? I think so. I think you gave Spook Mr. Mitchell's gun and the key to this house. And he came back, replaced the gun in the drawer after the murder. What a fantastic idea. Then, to make sure he was immediately placed under suspicion, you came to me with a very logical and believable story, which resulted in Craig being arrested for murder. Go on. What's the rest of it? When I threatened to bring the police in on the case, Spook panicked. You decided that if he were arrested, he might crack, and you knew he was leaving his house about 4 o'clock, so you went to the garage and killed him. All right, Mr. Maris. Now that it's over, I... I really don't care. But if you've ever known the heartbreak, the, the fury that surges over you when the one you love turns to someone else, over and over again, you reach the point where nothing matters anymore. Nothing. Here's the evidence, Lieutenant. Shall we go? Yeah. 